Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, I am so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, we are going to do an unboxing of Your Creative Studios March Kit. It is absolutely amazing. I will tell you, I've already peeked inside, so I know what's in there and it's gonna blow your mind. It is so stinking cute. I can't wait to show you everything that is in this kit. And I'm also going to show you how you can make a junk journal cover using basic supplies that you may already have in your kitchen, maybe even in your pantry. And we are going to make a junk journal cover. I have it right here. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek as to the junk journal cover that we are going to make using the contents from the March Your Creative Studio Kit. You guys, it turned out absolutely amazing. It is so stinking cute. I'm gonna show you from beginning to end how to build your own super easy junk journal cover. You are going to love it, so stick around until the very end because not only did I have enough to make one junk journal cover, but there were enough papers, beautiful papers in here to make two, and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. So grab yourself a cuppa, sit back, enjoy this video. If you would like to learn more about Your Creative Studio, I will have their link down below so that you can go over and visit their website. They have tons of kits that I'm sure you will love. And they also have other items, other ephemera, they have washi tape, they have stamps, so many wonderful things. I think you will enjoy it. So sit back and relax. I'm gonna flip the camera over and we're gonna get started. Let's start by opening the box and diving right into the beautiful contents that are here. Like I mentioned before, I kind of already knew what was in here when I did the intro video, but I'm excited to share the contents with you. When your creative studio reached out to me and asked if I wanted the March kit, they told me that I was absolutely going to love this, and I do. Out of the kits that I have unboxed just recently, I think this has to be my most favorite one. It is so beautiful. I always love this beautiful little thank you card that they include in, the, in their kits. It is so well made. It is so pretty and it's a nice little way of thanking you right before you open the package. All of their contents are always wrapped up in this beautiful yellow paper with a beautiful design and prints. And of course, the tissue paper can always be reused, repurposed, and made into so many other um, beautiful projects. So let's start with the, what I like to do is I like to take everything out of the box and as I open it, I just put the contents back in there. And we're going to start with this beautiful charm at first. I thought it was going to be a necklace, but it's actually a bookmark. Isn't it gorgeous? It is so sweet. And as you can kind of kind of tell, well, maybe you can't tell so much yet, but this March kit is B themed honeybees. So there's a lot of honeybees throughout the kit. There are sunflowers. It is so stinking cute. I love it so much. Now, even though it is a March kit, we are in the month of August and here in Northern Utah, it is honeybee season and it is sunflower season. So how fitting is this kit right now? If you would like to see more information, about your creative studio, I will have their link, the link to their website down below. So you can go over and give them a little visit. They have tons of great kits, but they also have other items like ephemera and they have rubber stamps and just so many wonderful things, including washi tape. These, this little booklet is so stinking cute. They almost resemble postage stamps and there is a generous amount of these little papers in this little booklet. And I'm gonna show you how you can easily use one of these as a faux postage stamp. They're like the right size and I wanted to bring in an envelope just to give you an idea of the size of these cute little papers. So many beautiful designs. I love how miniature it is, but the designs, and the patterns are gorgeous, you guys. There are all kinds of florals and botanicals, plus you get a variety of papers in this little booklet. They, some of them feel like art papers, and then right in the center, they placed some vellum designed papers in there. So these are absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to play with these. These are gonna be so much fun. As I've done with the past Your Creative Studios, and like I mentioned in the intro part, Oh, look at this little bunny. This one is so stinking cute. 
I will be working on a project at the end of the unboxing. So stick around so that you could see how I take these items and put them into practice. And I'm gonna make a beautiful junk journal cover using basic supplies and of course using some of the items from this kit. I love this little booklet. I just couldn't get enough. I wanted to show you each and every design of these little papers. <laughs> But then we'd be here all day, but I know you wouldn't mind. But go take a look on their website um, and go take a look at all of the amazing kits that they have to offer. This was super, super cute. It is like a little matchbox. Isn't that so sweet? And in it are cute little stickers. So stinking cute. There are labels and there are just different types of designs, which you can use in your collage. These are also great to seal envelopes and I like the size. You can also use them as faux postage stamp. So many different ideas to use these little stickers and they peel. They come apart super, super easy, but look at how tiny and cute these are. And I love that they come in a variety of shapes. So, and they're already die cut and ready to go. You just peel that back backing and you attach it to your project. So I'm kind of setting aside some of the ones that are catching my attention. I either like the shape or the design on them. And, you know, as I'm going through all of these, I can only, I start to imagine all the different ways that I can use all of these cute little elements into my project. So I just want to point out and show you some of the ones that really caught my attention. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to just peel the backing and have them ready to use as a sticker on all kinds of your projects. These are going to be so much fun to use. Super, super cute. And that little box, it's all in the details and the presentation. And I think that your creative studio does an amazing job of presenting their products into these little kits. These kits are a true happy mail because you open them and unwrap each and every item like a little present. And it truly makes me happy each time that I unbox one of these um, your creative studio kits and this is so pretty these are acetate sheets with beautiful botanicals and florals I tried to peel away thinking they were a sticker and so I um, I have them right here in front of me and I haven't determined whether or not they are a acetate sheet or if indeed they are some of the clear stickers and once I figure that out I will leave it in the, in the comment section for you but I didn't want to fuss over it too much, but I love the way it is. And just as it is right now, it can also be used as a placeholder in your book, as a bookmarker or a placeholder in your junk journals, just the way it is. And that's the first thing that came to my mind to use it as a bookmark. And maybe that's what it is, but I'll play with it a little bit more and I'll let you know, I'll comment um, in the comment section below and let you know what it truly is. But isn't it beautiful? And I love how it looks on that black background. Super, super cute. And then there are these vellum stickers, which can also be used as envelope seals. And they peel apart super easy and they feel really, really nice. This is where I realized that there was a bee theme in the, in the journal. So, excuse me, <laughs> in the kit, <laughs> that there are so many different uh, bee elements throughout and everything was curated so perfectly. When I first handled this package, I thought it was a, a little fabric piece, but when I opened it, I realized it wasn't fabric. It is tissue paper. Isn't that gorgeous of the little honeycombs? So stinking cute. I love this tissue and it is, it's going to be great for collaging, maybe even over some guest checks. I love using the tissue over guest checks. I love the way that looks. So this will be fun. And I love these colors, these orange and yellow hues um, with that honey color as well. I just think it is so perfect for this time of the year. Oh, and the reason why, I, I don't think I finished my um, telling you why it's so perfect for this time of the year in Northern Utah. The month of August, we have tons of uh, wildflowers and mainly sunflowers and they are all over the place. You see them on the sides of the freeways, on the sides of the roads. Um, in remote areas, there are sunflower fields, just wild sunflowers, absolutely gorgeous. We have them grow wild in the front of our yard and then they also grow in the backyard. 
and they come back each and every year. They look so beautiful as you walk in. Now, because of the wild sunflowers, it also attracts a lot of the bees. But the bees don't seem to bother us at all, and we're not gonna bother the bees because we love the bees. They are great for our ecosystem. And, but they are all over the front yard. So how perfect, when I opened this kit and realized it was the bee, the bee theme, I thought, yeah, it, it is the March kit, but oh my gosh, how fitting for this month in August for us right now. So I was worried that I was going to be a little bit late in unboxing it, but it's never too late to open or unbox a beautiful kit, you guys. And so far, all of the ones that I have that I have received from your creative studio are so nice because they can be used all year long. So absolutely perfect for this time of the year here in Northern Utah. Tell me where you are from and let me know if you have grow, um, wild sunflowers growing in your area. Um, I'm, I'm curious to know, do you have them in March or do you have them right now in August? I think that, I think, I don't know too much about the sunflowers in other growing regions across the world, but I'm curious to know if you have sunflowers in your area right now because I absolutely love the sunflowers. This is a beautiful sticky notepad. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at these colors, you guys. Just in time for late summer blooms. That's what it is. My, I'm celebrating my 54th birthday tomorrow, you guys, on August 15th. I'm recording this today is August 14th. And so I'm celebrating my birthday, my 54th birthday on the 15th. And every year my mother would gift me a bouquet of wild sunflowers and she would just pick them from the side of the road and she would make the most beautiful bouquets, birthday bouquets for me. And so sunflowers um, are, you know, they warm up my heart only because they always remind me of my mom and my birthday because she would always, always uh, give me sunflowers for my birthday. Now she gives me like roses too and other beautiful bouquets, but I miss, <laughs> hey mom, are you watching? I miss the sunflower bouquets, but she did that for years and years. And, oh, I'm showing you in this paper right here, the contents of these beautiful papers in this package. The packaging is really nice, by the way. This contains six sticker papers, six vellum papers, six art papers and six pattern papers. The art papers are thin and almost perfect for decoupage. And the papers measure about eight and a quarter by six, no, not by six inches wide. I don't remember how wide they are, but <laughs> they're beautiful. Maybe I can measure here for you. Um, they're measured in centimeters. So 12 by 21, 21 centimeters. And I, I don't know the conversion. Oh, they are five and a half by eight and a half. That is the size of these sheets. So, so, so cute. I'm actually going to use the sticker sheets and also the patterned paper. The patterned paper, is it the art paper? I'm sorry, I'm reversing this. The art paper, the art paper, Pa no, the art paper is like good for decoupage and then the pattern paper has a nice weight to it, almost like scrapbooking paper. So I'm gonna use several of these to apply onto the cover, the junk journal cover that we're going to make in just a moment. But aren't these designs just absolutely gorgeous? I love the colors, everything. Love all of these colors. And this dotted paper, I think is one of my favorites too. I love polka dots. I love the dotted paper in all of the colors. So, and then that, that reddish orange hue of the honeycomb. Oh my gosh. I need to recreate that color somehow. That one right there. It is so beautiful, nice and vibrant. And you guys know how much I love the color. So I love these so much. Okay, where are we and what are we gonna do? Oh, we've come to almost the very end where I get to open up these cute little pouches. And usually in these little pouches, I'll get some rubber stamps and some washi tape. So let's open them up and I can tell you what is in them. I save all of these little pockets for future use. And for these, I just use my letter opener to open these up. These rubber stamps are so stinking cute. I will also show you what these stamp like because they are absolutely gorgeous. You've got a couple of honey pots 
and then you have a some bees with some honeycombs and then there's another that I will open in just a moment but these are so stinking cute and they always have this this uh, acetate protective cover on them so I'm just peeling that away and that way you can now use these red rubber stamps onto your acrylic block and I do that um, later in the video I will grab my acrylic block and I will stamp these so that you could see how beautiful they stamp that red rubber is so vibrant and so detailed lots and lots of detail in this in these red rubber stamps and look at how beautiful this one is this was a really nice surprise I love this stamp I can see myself using this in all kinds of different projects and the first thing that came to mind was to stamp this on the book pages did you guys watch my video from a few days ago it is called what to do with all the junk mail envelopes and I talked about stamping um, so I did some stamping onto the book pages so that it shows through those envelope pockets but this one right here would be perfect for that as well so let's see and we've got one final pocket this one is they call it masking tape on the package but it is actually a nice little um, washi tape and it is gorgeous it is incorporating all of those other beautiful colors into this washi tape it is gorgeous, you guys. It is beautiful. I'm telling you, this is one of my most favorite. No, I think it is my most favorite Your Creative Studio kit thus far. So I love it so much. So I hope you guys enjoy the all the contents and the unboxing. And in just a moment, I am going to continue and we are going to start building the junk journal cover. Isn't it amazing? So beautiful. I love it everything in here i can't wait to use these to build ephemera and other things like that so let's move forward and let's start on the junk journal cover and i am going to keep moving on okay here we go let's start with the junk journal cover i'm using super basic supplies so i hope that you have something similar to this so that you can play along with me it is a very easy junk journal cover in fact most of my junk journal covers start this way i repurpose every single cereal box that comes into my house and i also have my daughters that save them for me so i have trimmed down the cereal box because i typically like to use or like to work with junk journal covers that are about eight and a half by six inches wide it is my favorite size and i also trimmed down the spine the spine was two inches wide but that was too wide for me and i pointed down below i have a video and i'm going to link it down below so if you want to learn how to reduce the spine on your cereal box click that link down below and it'll take you to a video that shows you how to make it smaller super easy steps on how to do that so what i am going to do is i am going to take the cover and i am going to cover it i'm going to make it a little bit sturdier so i went through my junky junk box where i keep packaging and scraps of chipboard and i've already cut them down to size to match the cover they are a heavier weight board because what i want to do is strengthen that cereal box the cereal box basically is the base or the foundation of the junk journal cover but i need to make it a little bit sturdy because i want it to last for some time and so we want to give it some sturdiness so all i do is take my pre-cut pieces and i'm going to cover both front covers uh, the front cover the back cover inside and out and for this i'm going to use a glue that really is going to keep everything in place i love this glue it is called the ultimate glue and if you are interested in this glue i do have an amazon storefront i will have that link down below if you would like to learn more about this product just click that link to my amazon excuse me it's my amazon affiliate link so super easy. Once you prep all of the pieces and you know what measurements that you like to work with, you can start building the pieces. So doing the same thing to the other cover. When I get to the part where I um, glue the inside, well, I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But notice how I am not 
adding glue to the very outside edge. And the reason is once I am done adding these boards to strengthen it, and once I am done adding the beautiful pattern papers to the cover, I'm going to run, I'm gonna run it through the sewing machine. And I love the look of the zigzag stitching all around the, um, the junk journal. So this right here, I'm pointing out that it is just a little bit under the size of that, of the spine. And I'm gonna tell you what that is. So I think that spine ended up being one and three quarters of an inch. No, let's see. That one is one, yeah, one and three quarters of an inch. So that sturdier piece of white paper, I cut it just under that one and three quarters because I don't want it to cover the edges, the ones where I fold. So it's just, it's gonna sit right in between where those fold marks are, where the creases are. And then just feeling to make sure that it stays within, within the spine edges. And that was it, that was pretty easy, huh? Not too bad. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the inside of the cover. And I'm taking my time and showing you how to do this. I have had a lot of questions lately as to um, the easy steps, or not easy steps, but um, a lot of people are wondering how to start making junk journal covers, like where to begin. And I think this is, this is a really good step at any level, but especially if you are a beginner to junk journals and you want to learn how to make a super easy cover with items that you may already have, especially these cereal boxes, this is the best way to start, especially if you don't want to, you know, tear into a book. Maybe you're not ready to alter a book. I know that it took me a long time <laughs> to alter a book. It was very difficult, but now, when I alter books for junk journals, I go looking for books that are about to be discarded. So I don't feel bad tearing them apart. And also a lot of vintage books. And, and I still have a collection of Reader's Digests that I just can't get myself to, to alter. But I do have a couple that are kind of falling apart. So maybe I will start on those. But I know I'm going on a, on a tangent here, squirrel. But this is the best way to start with your junk journal covers. Just go shopping in your pantry. Take the cereal, take that wax bag of cereal out and just use the, <laughs> use the box to make a cover and just cut it down to size. So smoothing it out and burnishing it well to make sure that it is nice and sturdy on there. And that, my friends, is the foundation of your junk journal cover. Super is easy. It goes by really, really fast. And if I have, um, like there's some edges there that are kind of overlapping. So I'm just gonna easily trim those away before I begin to collage. I'm not really going to collage. I'm just going to cover the sheets, the designed or the pattern paper that, that I'm going to use is the perfect size of my junk journal cover. In fact, I measured the papers uh, to make sure that they would line up perfectly with my cover. So there was a little bit of measuring involved, but it's the size I already like to work with. And so now here comes the fun part. I'm gonna go through these papers and the first ones that I am going to use will be the sticker papers. So easy and how convenient you guys to be able to have all of your pattern paper be sticker paper. And so I'm kind of just thumbing through, selecting which ones I want to use for the front cover, the back cover, and then the inside as well. So I'm just gonna set aside all of the sticker papers first, and we are going to start with those. Oh no, what do I do first? I take it back. First, I'm gonna cover the spine. <laughs> So I'm selecting my paper so that I can cover the spine. That is step number one. So I'm gonna take two of the sheets. I know, so pretty. It was not an easy decision to select these papers because I love them all. 
But like I told you earlier, you guys, there were enough sheets of paper for me to do two junk journal covers. That was a nice surprise. So I am taking this beautiful paper and I'm just going to line the inside of it. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and I am going to kind of burnish it to make sure that it really sticks. And then I'm going to take and just smooth everything out and it smooths out really, really nice. So the first thing you want to do is lay it flat and then take your, take your bone folder and just smooth everything out before you crease it. That way you don't get any bubbles. So just go over that. And then once you burnish it really, really well, then is when you want to fold the cover and then go back and then go over the little indentation marks with your bone folder. So in hindsight, don't, you know, as I look back, make sure you stick it down really well and burnish it really well before you fold it. And then just go in there and get into the little crevices with your bone folder. I'm going to do the same thing with this dotted paper. And on the inside, I did exactly that where I burnished it really well before I folded it and creased it. Yep, just like that. Super easy because you want to make sure that it sticks down really well. And it was the easiest, I think it was the easiest I've ever done. Or it's the easiest junk journal cover I have ever made because these papers are ready to go. I love the fact that they have the sticky. In the second journal, I used a combination of the two. I used some um, sticker paper because there were only six sheets of sticker paper, but that's okay because the pattern paper glued down just easy with my ultimate glue. So it didn't take too much, too much time to do that as well. Now for this one, I had to play around with that edge, there was a little bit, it was a little bit short and it didn't cover the white. So I'm gonna have to get creative and I'm going to cut a strip that I'm going to layer between those two pieces. Did that make sense? You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So I'm gonna grab, I know it was really hard. It was hard to cut strips of this paper. I didn't think, you know, the size would have been perfect had I measured and placed it down just perfectly, but I didn't, so, but it still works out. I'm gonna take two strips of this beautiful paper and you'll see what, I'm, what I mean where um, I'm gonna overlap it over the edge of the, the paper I used for the spine so that the white doesn't show through when I add the sticker paper to the front cover. There we go, does that make sense? I sure hope so. I hope my visual is helping too. <laughs> so I just needed a little strip. And now when I place the front paper over it, the white is completely covered. And I could have probably trimmed it down a little bit more. I didn't have to use it that wide. but I never said I was perfect, you guys. <laughs> I learn as I go. In fact, the second journal was if, I think, I thought this one was easy, but the second one was even easier. So I always say practice makes better. Not perfect, just better. And see how nice it's gonna look. And it's almost not even visible that I have that, that, um, that one layer underneath, it just blends in. They coordinate so well together. Out of all of the papers, I mean, I like the dotted one, but this one with the honeycomb was my favorite and I wanted to make sure that I used it on the front cover of this journal. The sunflower one is equally gorgeous and they peel apart so easy. I just have to bring it up to my face because I probably wasn't wearing my glasses when I was doing that. And then just because it's sticker paper, you want to be careful and you want to line up the edges before you commit and press it down. And so you should have seen my head. It was, you know, underneath looking at all the sides, making sure that I had positioned it right. 
so stinking cute. I love this so much. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't sure when I was doing, I always like to do a project when I do the unboxing of your creative, your creative studio kits. And after I, once I was going through it, I'm also trying to think, okay, what can I create? And I didn't want to overthink it. And I didn't want to spend too much time um, thinking about the project I wanted to work on. So when I got to the pattern papers, I knew exactly what I was going to do. And that was make a junk journal cover. Also, because right where I was standing, right in front of me, I'm moving my, my room around. So I've got all kinds of stuff all over the place. But right in direct sight over the unboxing video that I was doing, I have all of my cereal boxes. So that's where I got the idea. So as I'm going through the pattern papers, I'm like, oh wait, the cereal boxes are over there. Oh, I can totally do a cover, super easy. So for this, I wanted to use this one as well. And this was the pattern paper and it wasn't sticky paper. And I just added glue to make sure it really, really sticks down and then just burnish it. I am generous with glue, so some of it seeped out of the edges a little bit, but it cleans up super easy. I just wanted to make sure that the paper really, really adhered to the base, to the inside of the cover. So, so pretty. Thank you to Your Creative Studio for reaching out to me and for offering me these kits i absolutely love them you have been very generous with me with uh, these with these kits and i thank you very very much let me know if you have if you have this kit if you have worked with it or if you have received your creative studio kits they are a really wonderful wonderful product especially if you are building your supplies if you are junk journaling, or even if you scrapbook or memory keep, this is a great way to, to build your supplies. I think you will enjoy these very much. So wh whichever you decide to use, whether you use a sticker paper for this or the other pattern papers, just know that you can make multiples, <laughs> multiples. Well, two, you can, well, there, there were still some papers left. So I wonder if I could have made a third junk journal. I'm going to have to see because I really like that, but I don't finish. So in today's video, I, I'm only making the junk journal cover. So I don't finish the signatures or any other ephemera. And so if you would like to see that in the future uh, videos, please subscribe because you don't want to miss the completion of these. And that is where I will use a lot of the other elements to form the signatures and also build ephemera. Okay, so I took it to the sewing machine and I did a beautiful zigzag stitch all the way around. And here is the second junk journal that I already made. I made that one off camera, but I did it the exact same way I did the first one. And I also will be running it uh, through the sewing machine all along the edges. And I love using gold thread on most, I'd say 99% of my junk journals have the gold zigzagging, zigzag thread all on the, um, on the outside. And I love, absolutely love how it turned out. And that gold thread coordinates so well with the junk journal cover. So these are so beautiful. So yeah, as I was saying, I will be using a lot of those little papers and I'll be doing some rubber stamping to build ephemera and build pockets and tuck spots and things like that to insert in these uh, within this junk journal covers. So if you're not subscribed and you are watching here today, please subscribe so that you don't miss these videos and you don't miss the completion of these junk journals. I think they're going to turn out absolutely amazing and uh, perfect time of the year for these. So I reached over and I grabbed some book corners. These are by Tim Holtz. And I like to do a little bit of glue in the corners just to make sure that they, that they don't budge from the corners. And the nice thing about the Ultimate Glue is that it, it adheres to metal, glass, 
paper, ceramics. It's a really, really strong glue. And I just use a little bit underneath the book corners and then I just press them down and then wipe away any of the excess glue. But it really, really makes it so that these are not going anywhere. And then just lightly press with my little pliers. I kind of give them a little head start. I do pinch them before I even attach them to the corners. I do pinch them a little bit with my fingers. So when I slide them onto the corners, they're not too loose. So I did that before adding them. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side as well. And then just go over to make sure that they are all even It's all in the details. It's all in those little touches, you guys. Adding the, now the book corners are completely optional, but I love the way it looks. I just love the look of the book corners in all of my junk journals. And so I love these as well. And so that little detail kind of finishes off the look of the cover. I'm also, I thought, well, while I'm at it, let me add the, um, the eyelet because that's where I like to thread the closing ribbon on the journal. And I like to use these wide eyelets. These are by We Are Memory Keepers. And I'm just going to measure just to make sure I get the eyelet centered on that front cover. And you can see the cover is eight and a quarter inches. So I'm going to mark it at four and what is that? Was it eight and a half? And I'm marking it at four and a quarter. Anyway, I just want to make sure that it's right in the center. I'm using my crop -a dial And then with a pencil, I'm going to poke through. I'm going to make sure everything is even, all of the edges. And I'm just going to poke my pencil through it to mark where the hole is. That way the two holes are now evenly centered. In my Amazon affiliate link, I also have information as to those We Are Memory Keepers eyelets and the glue, and I think even the, um, the crop -a dial So if you want more information on those items, um, you can click on my link and you can learn more about, about those tools. These are my favorite, favorite eyelets to use. They add a nice little finishing touch. I have been using these for several years now. Um, a while back, it's been years, I saw someone on, on YouTube use these for, I can't remember what, what project, it was a long time ago. It was the first time I had ever seen them. So I have been using them ever since, maybe like five, five or six years. So they are my favorite. Isn't it gorgeous? Isn't it beautiful, you guys? I love how it turned out absolutely love. Let's see, what am I doing next? Oh yeah, I'm going to show you what the rubber stamped images look like. So I'm going to grab a white, a piece of white scrap paper. I reached over and grabbed this really large ink pad. I love the screen color. This one is by Ranger and it was designed by Wendy Vecchi and it's such a beautiful shade of green and it'll really bring out all of that detail in the rubber stamps. Here's a little trick for you. I will always use a little bit of glue stick onto the acrylic block just to make sure that my cling stamps don't pop off and I do this with every single red rubber cling stamp that I have regardless of who makes it um, and it's just a way to ensure that your that your red rubber cling stamp isn't going to pop off the acrylic block especially if you are stamping directly onto your project the last thing you want is for that ink to fall excuse me for the rubber stamp to fall off and smudge your paper so it's just a little tip that I've been doing for a really long time just add a little bit of glue stick onto the acrylic block and to make sure that your red rubber stamps are secure onto the acrylic block Look at how beautiful that sunflower stamp turned out, you guys. And with that green ink, it just shows off every little detail. These red rubber stamps are so beautiful. There is a lot of detail in those. Look at those cute little honey pots. You could see all the little detail in these beautiful, beautiful um, stamps. So I will be using these. That sunflower one uh, will probably live 
on my desk for the rest of the year. I love it so much. I hope you guys are enjoying this and look at these beautiful honeybees with the honeycomb. These are so cute. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you, but please stick around for me to say goodbye to you. Don't leave just yet. You guys, thank you so much for sticking around with me until the very end. Can you believe that we were able to get two junk journal covers from that one kit? Wow. And we're not done. I still have all of the contents inside that we are going to work on so that I finish the signatures and all of the ephemera and building the inside of each of these journals. If you are not subscribed to my channel, I invite you to subscribe so that you don't miss the completion of these two beautiful journals. You guys, we are almost at 8,000 subscribers and my mind, poof, it is blown. You guys are so awesome. You guys are so wonderful. A great big hug to each and every one of you because without you, I wouldn't be here. So I appreciate all of your support, your likes, your comments, your shares, and of course, you subscribing. So if you are here for the first time and you are not subscribed to my channel, please click subscribe. I would love to have you here. You guys take care and I will see you next time. Bye.